Hi students, welcome to exercise 11a, solving trigonometric ratios. This should give you a nice little review of what grade 11 pre-cal was and then kind of make the connection with the beginning of grade 12 pre-cal. Alright, so solve the following equations over the given interval. So this is a question here that you would have seen in grade 11 pre-cal, very similar. Um, we're going to try to do this using our unit circle, so you might not need to use the calculator for this example. Okay, so in the past what you did is you found the inverse sine function and you solved for the reference angle. Okay, but knowing this equation is an exact value, right, and you can look at your unit circle again and kind of identify those values. So sine is equal to negative one half, and I hope you guys can identify that on your unit circle. Uh, it's equal to 100, uh, sorry, 210 degrees, so this would be your angle in the third quadrant, and 330 degrees, which would be the angle in the fourth quadrant. Okay, so the exact same thing happens over here, right, except here we're at asking this question in radians. So again, no calculator is necessary because this is an exact value, right? So you can simply state, looking at your unit circle, or knowing these values without that, that x is equal to 7 pi over 6, and x is equal to 11 pi over 6, which is the radiant values uh, of uh, those degrees. So exact same solutions, this one's in radians, this one's in, in degrees. It really depends on the interval that it's given. Okay? Now, what if it's not exactly on the unit circle as the first two questions are? So cos equals to negative 0 0.366. Okay, so at the end of the day, you don't really know where that is on the unit circle. So this is one of those examples you need to find the reference angle. Okay, so what you're going to do, um, you're going to find the inverse function. So you would have learned this in grade 11 pre-calculus. So the reference angle is equal to cos to the negative 1 of 0 0.366. If you guys remember, we talked about this in the review at the beginning of the year. Anytime you take the inverse function of cos, you always put this as a positive value to find your angle of reference. Okay, so you plug that into your calculator, and we're going to round this off to three decimal places because that's pretty standard from our course. So the angle of reference is equal to uh, 68.531, and that's degrees. Okay, so now with this reference angle, what you're going to do is you're going to make yourself a little chart here, and you're going to decide, okay, where is cos negative? Because the original question says, when is cos negative? Well, I hope you guys know that cos is negative in the second and third quadrant. Again, if you think about exercise 10, we've stated that cos is x. Well, where is x negative? x is negative in 2 and 3. So that's why you're finding those quadrants. All right, so now to find your answer, in the second quadrant, so I'm going to put a little 2 there just to know we're looking for the second quadrant, you're going to have 180 degrees minus your angle of reference, which is 68.531. So your angle in the second quadrant, if you perform that calculation, the quick calculation in your calculator, this would be with the calculator, obviously, um, and you'd have 111.469 degrees. Okay, so now you're your angle in the third quadrant, that would be two, uh, sorry, 180 degrees plus your angle of reference, 68.531. And we should be able to do that without a calculator because it's just a, a addition. So it's 248 degrees and 5.31. All right, so those would be your two solutions for that. Um, again, if you typed in cos of this angle, you should get about negative 0.366. Uh, the reason it would be exact because we rounded, right? This is a rounded answer, so it might be a little off. Both those solutions, cos of that angle and cos of this angle, would definitely give you that. Notice that if your question is asking you degrees, you have to make sure your calculator is in degrees. Okay, so if you got a weird answer for this, it wasn't 68.531, check your, your calculator. might be in radians instead of degrees. Okay, so the next one, secant of 2 over square root of 3. Well, anytime you're asked to answer a question using secant, I suggest, and actually it's the only way you're going to do it, is to change it in cosine. Because cosine and secant are uh, inverse functions, 
right? So that's the secondary function. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to change secant to cos theta. And if you remember, for cos theta, what you got to do is you reverse the fraction. And what you're doing is finding cos theta equals square root of 3 over 2. Notice that this is an exact value, right? So because this is an exact value, you don't need your calculator. You can just look at your unit circle. And I'll pull one up in a second. Give me one second. Okay, so you should have a unit circle popped up here. So now we're looking for when is cos equals to square root of 3 over 2. And square root of 3 over 2, if you look carefully, square root cos is equal to square root of 3 over 2 here and here. So pi over 6 and 11 pi over 6. So that would be our solution. So pi over 6 and 11 pi over 6. Okay. Notice that in the question, it doesn't give you a normal interval. Usually we're asked for the first revolution. Well, in this case, it's not just the first revolution. It's actually not even the complete revolution. You want anything between 0 and pi, right? And you want anything between 0 and negative 2 pi. Which means, if we look back at the solution we gave, this is actually not a solution part of the uh, solution set of this interval. Because that would be outside of the given interval. So 11 pi over 6, that still works because it's between 0 and pi. right? So it's between 0 and pi over here. So now we need to find the values on the negative rotation. So this, if this is, if, sorry, if this is pi over 6, this would be negative pi over 6. Because don't forget, this is a point that gives us a solution. So the other two solutions would be negative pi over 6, right? And if you went around the circle, exactly, if this is 11 pi over 6, this to this point would be negative pi over 6. Sorry, negative 11 pi over 6. And these would be your solutions here. Okay, a quick note. Sometimes the interval in D is more than one revolution. This can sometimes give more revolutions. So notice that because of this interval here, sorry, I'll move this, because of this interval, okay, so you have the, the first negative revolution from 0 to negative 2 pi, so those are those solutions, and then from 0 to pi, which is just that revolution. Okay, in this question, answer a variety of, of uh, different types of questions, um, a little similar. These require a little bit more work before you actually can just find the reference angle. So in this question, the first one here, okay, notice that we do not we do not have cos theta isolated. So the first thing you want to do is you want to isolate cos theta. So if we're going to do 3 over there. So slide that 3 over. So we're going to have th 2 cos theta equals to 2, right? Because you added, you added 3 here, so add 3 there. And then divide each side by 2, which means we have cos theta equals to 1. Okay, well then, again, we got to look when is cos theta equals to 1, and I hope you guys recognize that is an exact value as well, that is uh, on the unit circle. So when is cos, so x, equal to 1? So x is equal to 1, and if I was to just draw a little diagram here, x is equal to 1 right here on the unit circle, right? So if this was our unit circle, x is equal to 1 right there. So what are the possible degree values? 0 degrees, which is a possible solution here. So theta equals to 0 degrees. And if you go around the circle, 360, 360 would also be part of that interval. And if you went around one more time, you'd be at 720, but 720 would not be part of that solution. So this would be our solution. All right, next question. Again, we need to isolate secant x. So we'll move the 8 over to the other side. So 4 secant x equals to negative 8. Divide each side by 4. Secant x equals to negative 2. And then again, anytime you, ha you don't have a primary uh, trig function, you need to change this secant into cos. Because the only way you're going to be able to use a calculator or figure it out is with a cos function. So now if we change the cos, don't forget, anytime you change the cos, you're going to flip this fraction around. So this negative 2, right, becomes negative 1 half. All right, well, again, this is an exact value on your unit circle. So have that unit circle handy. And uh, cos equals negative 1 half. Take a look at uh, your answers. Uh, always look at the interval to make sure you're answering the right interval. 
we're asking for the first positive revolution. Well, that's actually pretty easy because that's exactly what unicircle circle is. So at cos equals negative one half, you would have two pi over three. So again, cos is the x values. When is x equals the negative one half? And you're going to have four pi over three in the fourth uh, third quadrant. So that would be your solutions. Okay, so ramp up the difficulty just a tiny bit. Here we're going to have some factoring going on. So notice that there's sine x, sine squared x minus sine x. So anytime you see this, and very much what you did uh, in grade 11 pre-cal, and when factoring and solving for zeros, we're going to imagine this is something a little different. We're going to imagine this is, so I won't use, I won't use x. Um, I'll use another variable, I don't know, t. So imagine t squared minus t equals zero. So to solve this, you would factor t like that, right? And then you would give two solutions, t equals zero and t equals one, right? So this is just a thought bubble. This isn't what the work you're doing. I just want to recognize that that's very similar to what we're doing. So in this case, you're going to factor sine x. And you're going to have two solutions to this problem. You'll have when sine x is equal to zero, so that'll be one solution. And you're going to have when sine x is equal to one, which would be the other solution. Okay, well, again, those are exact values on your unit circle. When is sine equal to zero? Well, sine is equal to zero um, on the x, I'm sorry, well, on the x axis, right? So sine is equal to zero here and here. And sine is equal to one right over here. That's the y value, right? So if you're looking at your interval from zero to 180, you would have zero as a possible solution you'd have 90 as a possible solution and 180 as a possible solution. So over here you'd have 0 degrees and 180 degrees and over here you'd have 90 degrees. So these would be the two equations that you solve. Alright, so tan squared theta minus 1. Uh, there's more than one way to solve this one. Uh, I think my preferred way would be to have tan uh, squared theta equals 1. So I brought the 1 on the other side. So again, I'm kind of isolating tan theta. I'm going to square root each side. Okay, so you're going to have tan theta equals 2. And whenever you take the square root of 1, right, you had two technical possible answers. You would have plus or minus 1. So that's creating two equations like we did here. So I'm going to rewrite this as two different solutions, uh, two different equations. You have tan theta equals 1, and you have tan theta equals 2. Uh, negative one. Okay. Well, those aren't necessarily directly from your unit circle, but I think we've uh, ice, uh, we've uh, identified where tan is equal to one and negative one already. So tan is equal to one, and we're looking again uh, at this right here, the interval. So tan is equal to one. Tan would be equal to one over here at pi over four, and over here at five pi over four, and tan would be equal to negative one at these two spots. Okay, so those are the four corners basically of your circle because the x and y values are the same, right? Uh, be careful of the interval that's presented. The interval is from negative pi to pi. So you want the positive values here from zero to pi, but then you want the negative values over here from zero to negative pi. Okay, so we, there will be four solutions because this is from 0 to pi, you got 2, and from 0 to negative pi, you got 2. But they're not necessarily exactly what the unit circle shows, right? Okay, so let's go from 0 to pi. You would have pi over 4 and 3 pi over 4. Okay, so you would have theta equals to pi over 4 and 3 pi over 4. Notice that that would be 1 from each. 3 pi over 4 would be from tan negative 1. Pi over 4 comes from tan equals to 1. So now the negative ones, from 0 to negative pi, you would have negative pi over 4 here, and you'd have negative 3 pi over 4 over here. So, oops, theta equals to negative pi over 4, and negative 3 pi over 4. Okay, so this would be the four solutions. There's another way to look at it. We might take a look at that in class. Last one, so this is a factored trinomial. Uh, if you were to 
expand this, right? So this times this, you'd have a trinomial. Um, this is already factored for you. And every time you have a factor, right, equals zero, you just have to make each factor equal to zero to solve it. So this creates two equations. You'd have two sine x plus one equals to zero. And you'd have two sine x minus square root of three equals zero. And then you just have to solve for both equations for sine. So in this one, you bring the negative one over divided by two. So you'd have sine x equals to negative one half. And this one side, you bring the square, uh, the square root of three over, bring the two over, you have sine x equals to square root of three over two. And again, exact values. I hope you can identify that. One half square root of three over two. Those are exact values. You can find it on the unit circle. So I'll quickly give you the solutions for sine x equals negative a half. We've actually solved this as the, one of the first questions in today in this lesson. So x would be equal to 7 pi over 6 and 11 pi over 6. Okay, and then this question right here, sine equals the positive square root of 3 over 2. So that's quadrant 1 and 2. So x would be equal to pi over 3 and 2 pi over 3. And that's the question it's asking. It's asking us for the first revolution. So these are the two solutions. All right, guys. See you in class.